Headlines this week were dominated by vaccines, and rightly so. This was the news we'd all been waiting for all year long. As of today, three vaccines have already been approved. At least two others are awaiting regulatory approvals, and many others are in phase three of trials. These numbers help us end this year on a better note, a hopeful note. But the question is, do they end the Wuhan virus pandemic? Hello and welcome to Gravitas Plus. I'm Palki Sharma Upadhyay. I do not enjoy being a killjoy, but my job is to bring facts to you. And facts are what I'm sticking to when I say that the pandemic is not going away anytime soon. While vaccines may be here, the virus too is likely to stay. And I will argue my case in three points. We will begin with history, consider past pandemics and how they went. We will then look at the present situation, take into account all that we know about the current vaccines. And third, we will look at the future, talk about the challenges ahead. So let's get started with history. The Wuhan virus is not the first pandemic. History has seen way too many. The Great Plague of Marseille, the first cholera pandemic, 1817 to 1824, seven years. The third plague pandemic started in China sometime in 1855 and was considered active until 1960. That's 105 years. The Spanish flu or the 1918 flu pandemic lasting from January 1918 to December 1920. The Asian flu started in Hong Kong in 1957. There was a second wave in 1958. Finally, a vaccine was developed. In the last two centuries, cholera has reached pandemic proportions seven times. The last one ended in 1975. SARS was the first pandemic of the 21st century. It originated in China in 2002. HIV started in 1981. It is still classified as a pandemic. It's been almost 40 years. More than 32 million people have died. Close to 38 million others are still living with it. We do not have a vaccine for HIV. We have one for the Wuhan virus, but it may still not be a silver bullet. A McKinsey report predicts that it may take as long as until December 2021 for the US to achieve herd immunity, and that it may take at least a year for the pandemic to end. At least one year. Viruses, you see, don't just disappear, they take time. There are repeated waves. Today, if India appears to have bent the curve, hospitalization in California is up 72% in the last two weeks. Vaccine is just one weapon in the fight against a pandemic. Since we're talking about history, consider this. Vaccines exist for a bunch of other human viruses too. Why is it that only smallpox has been eradicated from the planet? A vaccine for it was developed by Edward Jenner in 1796. Smallpox was eradicated 184 years later in 1980. It devastated humans for 3,000 long years. Let's cut to the present. Times have changed, science has progressed. If a vaccine could be developed at a record speed of less than 10 months, of course we'll be able to speed up other processes too. From manufacturing to distribution to the administering of a vaccine. But how much can we rely on the current shot? And I'm not questioning the vaccine makers and the experts who worked so hard. But there are some genuine questions that we must raise. For example, how long will the vaccine-induced immunity last? Pfizer CEO Albert Burla said that the question of duration will be, quote-unquote, part of ongoing studies, which basically means we do not have an answer. Some researchers from Harvard have modeled a few trajectories. If immunity lasts only a few months, there could be a big pandemic followed by smaller outbreaks every year. Say the immunity lasts close to two years. Then the Wuhan virus could peak every other year. Now you know what I'm talking about? The McKenzie study points out that while the Pfizer trial enrolled some children, the efficacy remains unclear. So we do not know how effective this vaccine will be for those who are under the age of 18. What is also blurry is that while the vaccine may be able to immunize a person from a virus, will it be effective in stopping its transmission? So you may be safe after taking the vaccine, but will you still be a carrier? The Wuhan virus is asymptomatic in many, many cases, and it is a fast-moving respiratory pathogen. 
It has managed to spill over from animals to humans. It has traveled to almost every corner of the world on airplanes, shipments, surfaces, through the air. So even if we are betting on vaccines, we must immunize a sizable portion of the global population in order to lower the risk of the virus. There are 195 countries in this world. The virus has reached all the countries except these. The world today has 7.7 .7 billion people. For a two-shot vaccine, the world would need at least 15 billion doses, one five. But do we have enough? The answer lies in the world's pharmacy, that's India. India supplies 60% of the vaccines to the developing world. Pune Serum Institute is the world's largest vaccine manufacturer. Its CEO said, and I'm quoting, it's going to take four to five years until everyone gets the vaccine on this planet. And then there is an imbalance in supply. More than 10 billion doses of vaccines have been pre-ordered. 27 European Union states, along with five other countries, have pre-ordered half of it. These countries account for only 13% of the global population. High-income countries, rich countries, they're hoarding vaccines. And leading this pack is Canada. Canada has ordered nearly nine doses for each individual. The United States has ordered seven doses per person. The UK has more than five doses for each citizen. Australia, more than five doses per person. The EU, more than four doses per person. Japan, more than two doses per person. The end result is this, 9 out of 10 people in almost 70 poor countries may not get a vaccine. That said, a vaccine is not a silver bullet. And even if it were, there are people not willing to take it. And the anti-vaxxers are only one part of the hurdle. So what does the future hold? Will the pandemic end? Will the virus be eradicated? Here's what experts say. Number one, there is always a chance that the Wuhan virus will mutate. Every virus mutates, even the flu virus. Will the vaccine be able to cover us against a mutated Wuhan virus? We don't know. We don't have an answer just yet. Number two, over time, the Wuhan virus may become just another seasonal respiratory virus. That's a possibility. It will be like the other coronaviruses that cause common colds like 229E, OC43, NL63, and HKU1. These are viruses. Point number three, a vaccine may not eradicate the Wuhan virus, but over the years, a shot may make the virus less dangerous, less disruptive. Number four, even if the virus disappears from humans, it may linger on in animals. It may find new hosts. This nature report, points out that animal sources of the coronavirus continue to elude scientists. So far, the Wuhan virus has been found in bats, tigers at the Bronx Zoo, lions in Spain, minks on Dutch farms, who may have caught the virus from humans and then passed it back to those working on these farms. So this time, the Wuhan virus may have spilled to humans from bats, but there's no guarantee that the next time it will not be passed to humans from another animal. History may not have answers. The vaccine numbers may be lying. Experts may be gauging the future wrong, but say all of them were right. What does that tell us? That masks and social distancing are still not going away anytime soon. Work from home will go on for some more time. Crowded restaurants may be a thing of the past for the foreseeable future. Sanitizers and hand washes will remain, as will temperature checks, festivals, weddings, birthdays, gatherings. They will all have to be modified in 2021 too. I'm sorry to break all of this to you. Holidays and vacations will have to either wait or be tweaked. And it may not be until 2024 that everyone in the world gets access to a shot. And even after that, the Wuhan virus may not be eradicated from the face of this earth completely. If you go by this Atlantic article, the Wuhan virus will never go away. I do wish it does, but we all know better. So let's learn to live with it. Let's learn to defeat it. Gravitas Plus, co-presented by Skoda. Simply clever.